This is the third in the series of videos looking at the SAS via deployment topologies. In the first video, we looked at some of the basics and the new way that SAS via is deployed when it's running on Kubernetes. In the second video, we discuss some of the Kubernetes features for controlling the deployment and, and an example of using a dedicated Kubernetes cluster for the SAS via software. In this video, I would like to look at Samples Part 2. That's using a shared Kubernetes cluster for multiple SAS via deployments or environments. So let's get started. Here is our sample environment. As I said, we're looking at multiple SAS via environments here. So in the previous examples, we had a Kubernetes cluster that was running one namespace. In this example, we can see that we've got two SAS via environments. Remember, when you deploy the SAS via software, it is to a names, Kubernetes namespace, and I can only have one SAS via deployment per namespace. So in this example, we have our production environment up here, shown by the blue dashed box, and in purple, we have our discovery environment. And one of the things to note in here is that the environments don't have to be the same. And I've tried to illustrate this by, in our production environment, we can see that our stateful and stateless pods are sharing the node pool for stateful and stateless nodes. And we discussed this in video two. We also then had our connect compute and our MPP CAS server. However, in our discovery environment, we can see that the stateful pods are only running on node pool 1, and our stateless pods are only running on node pool 2. We can also see that we can have different types of CAS servers per environment. We've got an MPP CAS server up here with a primary controller, secondary controller, and three workers. However, in the discovery environment, We've got another MPP instance of the CAS server. It could equally be an SMP instance if we want. But in this case, we've got a primary controller and this environment for the data scientists has six workers. Now let's discuss this in more detail. So as we've seen, it is possible to have a shared Kubernetes cluster for running multiple SAS via namespaces or SAS via environments. And in this example, we're using the default labels. So it is possible to do this on a single Kubernetes cluster, but you need to ensure that each node pool has the capacity to run the pods for all the SAS via environments. So let's have a look at this in more detail. This is a good approach if the environments are using the same node sizes. For example, Perhaps regardless of whether it is production or discovery, the CAS nodes all need the same instance type. But a driver for having different node pools is, is that it lets you use dis different compute instance types. For example, perhaps the data, data science discovery node pool needs to have GPUs, but the production node pool doesn't. If we drill into this example, running those two environments, we might do something like the following. We could set up the stateful node pool to have three nodes. The stateless node pool might have two nodes, and there could be one node for connect, two for compute, but our CAS node pool would have 12 nodes. This gives us a total of 20 nodes for the SAS via pods. Coming back to our example, we can see our two namespaces here and how we've laid out the various pods for the two environments. If we use that example on the previous slide, perhaps we've set things up so that our stateful node pool has three nodes, our stateless node pool has two nodes, our connect node pool only needs one node, our compute node pool has two, and we have 12 nodes for our CAS node pool. So why do I need 12? 
This is because in this example I've applied the default resource reservations for the CAS pods. And this means that there would be one CAS pod per node. So to run this MPP CAS server I've got a primary controller, secondary controller and three workers. So I would need at least five nodes to host that. And in the discovery environment I need seven nodes because I've got a primary controller and six workers here. So this gives us that grand total of 20 nodes for running the SAS via pods. But what if I don't need discovery running 24-7? And that was the assumption in the last example. Then I could make use of the auto scaling features for the node pools. For example, if the production environment is always on, but we don't need discovery on all the time, we might use something like this, where the minimum number of nodes in the stateful node pool is set to 2 with a maximum of 3. In the stateless node pool, I have a minimum of 1 and a maximum of 2. And this means when I have production running, I'm always guaranteed of having at least 3 nodes to host my stateful and stateless pods, given that we're sharing the two node pools. I only have one node or a static value of one uh, for the connect node pool. For the compute node pool, again, perhaps the workload here is largely driven by the discovery environment by our data scientist. So I could have a minimum of one and a maximum of two or perhaps it's three or four depending on the discovery workload. And for the CAS node pool, I have a minimum of five nodes to ensure that the production CAS server is running. But again, coming back to that maximum of 12 nodes. So if we took this approach of setting min and max values for the different node pools, this time it means that we could have a minimum of 10 nodes to 20 nodes running for the SAS via pods. But what if we want to dedicate nodes to a SAS via environment? To dedicate a node pool to an environment requires the use of custom labels along with the use of the default workload classes. For example, if I wanted to dedicate nodes to a production environment versus the non-prod or a test environment, I would need to set up new labels. I might have something like env for environment equals prod, or perhaps I've spelt it out as environment equals test, environment equals prod. You also must add the taints and tolerations so that we can send the pods to the specific or the required nodes. But you need to be careful that you don't build a conflict or a contradiction where the pods will not be started or scheduled on any, any of the nodes. This would be viewed as a complex configuration, really. So let's look at some of the drivers. So dedicating nodes to an environment, as I mentioned a, a moment ago, dedicating nodes to production or test or development, for example. Another driver is using different node sizes for the different environments. For example, perhaps in the discovery environment, the CAS server needs more capacity than in the production reporting environment. So larger instance types or VMs will be used in that environment. Or perhaps the data scientists need instances with GPU support, so we need that. But remember, all the nodes in a node pool have to be the same. So when we need a different instance type, we would need to set up a new node pool. And finally, dedicating nodes to a function. For example, perhaps we want to dedicate nodes to the real-time processing with event stream processing or the microanalytics score service. This might be done to protect that processing versus the general interactive processing. Now let's look at, it, at an example. So dedicating some nodes to an environment. Let's say we have three environments, development, test or UAT and production. The test or UAT environment is infrequently used but must be similar to production. 
However, it can be stopped when it's not in use. The development environment will share some resources with test UAT, for example, the compute and CAS node pools. SAS Connect workload isn't expected to be high, so all the environments can share a node pool. And the shared node pools are sized to have sufficient capacity for the environments. Here is our target state. As we can see, we've got our Kubernetes cluster with all our node pools set up. And we can see our three via deployments. We've got our production namespace, a test or UAT namespace, and the development namespace. We can see that the production and UAT environments have a similar structure. So where the stateful and stateless pods are sharing node pools one and two for production, they're also sharing in the test environment. We can also see over here we've got a node pool six and seven. And these are being dedicated to our non-production compute and CAS workloads. And again, the test and UAT environment and development are sharing the node pools. We can also see that to do this and to be able to dedicate, for example, to dedicate node pool four and five to production, we need another label. And here we can see that we have developed the label EMV equals prod for both of these. We'll next look at how to force the the production pods onto this. And likewise, over here, to enforce the placement of the compute and CAS pods into the node pool six and seven, I have a new uh, workload class of EMV equals non-prod and EMV equals non-prod on node pool seven as well. The previous slide showed the labels that are being used to enforce this topology, but you also need to apply taints and tolerations to get this. So let's have a look at this. So coming back to our image, we can see our various node pools and the labels that have been applied to each of the node pools. As before, we need to now apply taints to them. And as we can see in node pool one, we have a workload class of stateful and the stateful taint. And likewise with the work node pool two, we have our stateless taint because we have our workload class of stateless here. But what we can see in these environments where we want to, for example, force the production pods onto node pool four and five, we need that new label in here, that environment equals prod. So we also have to include that as a taint. So now the taint on these nodes has a taint for compute plus a taint for prod. And likewise, for the cat production CAS server, it has a taint for the workload class equals CAS and the workload class of environment equals prod. Similarly, for our non-prod node pools, we also have the taints applied here. Now that we have all our labels and taints applied to the nodes, we need to look at the tolerations that we have to apply to the pods to get this topology. If we start by looking at the stateful, the production stateful and stateless pods, we can see here that we end up with a toleration for the workload class equals taint, stateful taint and the workload class equals stateless taint. And similarly for the stateless pods, they have to have a toleration for both taints. And this means that the pods can be scheduled across both node pool one and two. However, for development, we want to limit the stateful and stateless pods to their individual node pools, to those nodes. So here we have to have a single toleration. In this case, it's for the workload class equals stateful taint. And in the stateless pods, they have the toleration for the workload class equals stateless. And that is all. Now, if we look at our compute and CAS pods, again, if we look at production first, we can see that the compute pods 
had the toleration for that taint of workload class equals compute. But now they also need to have a toleration for the taint of environment equals prod. Similarly for the CAS prods, they have a toleration of the taint for workload class equals CAS, but they also need this additional toleration for the workload class of environment equals prod. Once this is in place, you can see it enforces the compute pods to no pool 4 and the CAS pods to no pool 5. Finally, if we look at our non-prod environment here, we've added that taint of non-prod. So along with the toleration for the workload class of CAS, we also have to add this new toleration for the taint of environment equals non-prod. Finally, if you're going to enforce the strict rules for pod placement, you need to ensure that all the pods can be scheduled. Have at least one node pool, or at least one node, that does not have any taints. And this provides a scheduling option should the preferred placement not be possible. You should also think about perhaps having a node pool or a node for the non-via software. You could have a third party application node pool or it is enough to actually ensure that the system node pool has sufficient capacity to run these pods there. That concludes this video on using a shared Kubernetes platform for multiple SAS via environments.